Hi, my name is Tiffany and welcome to my quilting life. Today's video is about the King Quilter 2 Elite Special Edition. If you have purchased this machine, congratulations to you. If you are thinking about purchasing this machine, it is an awesome machine, easy to use, easy to understand, and I'm going to walk you through how to use it. Um, first of all, I do have to say one thing. This machine, I got the 12 foot frame. There's between 10 and 12. I got the 12 foot. It does not fit in my house. So I have to have it in my garage. So if you are planning on getting this machine or you just purchased it, make sure you have put it into a temperature controlled space. I have learned now that being in the garage, I can only use my machine six months out of the year. So in the wintertime, I can use it, but in the summer, I cannot. So in the summer, I have to take my whole entire machine off and put it in the house. Um, reason for that is this machine is very finicky, anything over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, in the summertime, by the time it hits 85, I do not use my machine anymore. I have had it now for a little over a year, and I will not use it in the summer. It just doesn't want to work. Um, in the cold, I've noticed it's been working pretty good, like really good actually. So it doesn't mind being in the cold. I would say no less than 45 degrees <laughs> because it is actually really cold after that and I don't know how the tablets or any if you get the cubot to go with it I don't know how any of that stuff is going to work with this machine in the cold so just remember if you have purchased this machine or are thinking about purchasing it keep it in a temperature controlled area um, where it's between um, 65 and say 85 degrees because that's about the best that it works. Um, other than that, it's kind of self-explanatory when it comes to putting a long arm machine indoors or outdoors. Just know that you need temperature control and I unfortunately do not have that. So I take care of my machine. Um, so we're going to get started with showing you how to um, thread the machine, how to roll bobbins with the bobbin thread, the bobbin roller that comes with it, uh, bobbin winder. Oh, see, sometimes I can't get my words correct. Um, I will show you how to baste a quilt. I have one loaded, but it's not basted yet. I will show you how that works. Um, and as well as how to thread the machine. I think I just said that. I'm not sure. <laughs> and um, I will show you the basics on the screen and what I keep track of. This machine does come with a front handle and screen, as well as rear handles and screen. Um, so I will show you a little bit about all of that and how to use the bobbin winder. Um, I have another video. I will link it in the description below on how to load the King Coulter long arm frame. Um, so let's get to it. So this is the King Coulter. Um, again, I have it in my garage, so don't mind the mess around it. Um, this is the King Quilter 2 Elite Special Edition. Um, don't mind that as my camera mount. <laughs> so I have the quilt loaded, but I'm going to start off with showing you the bobbin winder. I keep mine right here at the end of the machine, but I'm going to show you how it works. So give me a second to find a place to put this camera so I can show you better how it works. So here is the bobbin winder. Here's my thread, how you use glide. Um, first off, when you first get this machine and you get your bobbin winder, you need to set it up correctly. Um, oh, look at this, I have a wonderful tangle. Um, I don't need all this excess thread now that I've realized that I have a tangle. <laughs> so it goes on this stand thing. Okay, goes on the stand and it hooks facing front. So if you can read the not so readable words, that's the way it goes on here. Secondary to that, this right here is adjustable. This is how much thread you want on your bobbin. So you can either roll it not so full, here is a freshly round rolled one of a different color, or you can choose to have it rolled full. I can tell you from owning this machine now for a year that having this set to where it's super full 
does not help the bobbin casing at all. So I have mine adjusted to where it rolls it mostly full. Um, the machine does have um, a setting to where you can show it or tell it how much is on the bobbin and it'll give you an alarm when it's empty. I usually don't use that, but I'll show it to you. So adjust this in or out as needed. I have mine somewhat inwards. So I'm just showing you that. So let's put this back and I'll show you. This is the tension dial on here. Now, you want to make sure that this tension dial is tight, but not tight, if that makes any sense at all. You want it, it should come already perfect, but if this gets adjusted at all, you need to watch your tension on that. So I'm going to come up here with my thread into the top part. Can you see that? There's, I'm going to come up this top hook right here. I'm going to hook it through. And then on the back side, there is a little hole. And unfortunately, I cannot thread this and look through the camera. So I'm going to come through this little hole. Can you see that hole? Right there. There is a hole. Come through that hole. Okay. And then you're going to put the thread in between those tension discs. Okay. So we're in between the tension disc. And then I'm going to pull till where it snaps in there. And I can feel that there's some tightness, but it still pulls. Then I'm going to take an empty bobbin. I'm going to place it on here. So I'm just putting it on that hole. And I am going to wrap this around one, two, three times, and then come under the thread. So let's see if I can show you. I wrapped it around three times, and now I'm going under. Let's see if I can't do this one-handed. So I go under, that way it pulls it nice and tight, and then one, two. So once that happens, and I have my desired thread on here, which I'm making a big mess doing all this one-handed. I had too much, usually I have plenty of um, finger grasp. There it is. And I hold that end of the thread right here, and then I press start. And it'll pull it out of my finger, and it'll start winding it, like so. So I'm going to let it wind, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to show you that again, because I'm having issues today. One, two, three, and I don't need all this excess thread on here, because that's just a disaster. And then I go under the thread pull it up and press start and it pulls it right out of my hand and starts rolling it just like that by the way I'm still rolling I'm rolling a bunch of bobbins just so you know so just roll as many as you need for the project that you're doing I tend to roll um, quite a few bobbins um, because I have a hundred pack so I have plenty. Um, just a little bit about bobbins. These ones are um, Q-Tex sewing supplies. They work for handy quilter because they don't sell any more for King quilter and it was cheaper this way. Now see that lip? That lip does not is not really um, meant for this machine. Technically, these flat bobbins, these are the original flat bobbins. You can see there's no lip. Um, these are the original to the machine. I don't use them anymore. Um, I just run these new ones through the machine. Just remember when you're ordering them, it uses the Handy Quilter bobbins, unless you're ordering from um, the website where you ordered your King Quilter. So just letting you know that, that there is a difference. But it uses the same ones, if that makes any sense. Okay, so while the bobbins are winding, back here on the back of the machine is how it turns on. So there is a switch right here. And we're going to turn that on. And it will turn this on. So I'm going to show you the rear screen first. I use my machine on idle. And it will say 10 stitches per inch. This is typically how I use it. There is a menu on the rear screen. Just hit menu. 
Now it has all sorts of stuff to change needle stop position and use plus or minus key. And this also helps the needle go um, stay in the up or down position. It has all the directions, so press the plus to turn the light ring off and on from the rear screen. This is my lifetime stitch count. Then it has a project stitch count, which I need to get rid of, so you just press minus to get rid of it because this is a new project. <laughs> it has the display for how bright you want it to be. This is for the rear screen, as, again, but it also controls the front. So if you change your rear screen, you know, it will uh, uh, change the front as well. So if you move the machine, it shows that it's connected properly. There's also front and back. Make sure that it's connected properly. From hand wheel, it makes sure that's correct. Um, you press start to uh, change something. I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's for the speed. I don't use this one as often. Um, name of press key so you can tell what keys you want it to be. Rotate hand wheel and tones. So let's see if I turn this, it makes tones. So that lets us know that the hand wheel is connected properly. Insert USB disk. It has a USB drive. That's for updating and stuff. And back to, let's go back to the beginning again. Oops, that was back, but oh well. We're going to go to the front now. Let me load another bobbin and I'll be right back. I tend to roll a ton of bobbins when I'm doing a project. And whatever I don't use just goes in my little table thing. <laughs> it's actually a little case, but I just stick them in there. Now I'm at the front screen and handlebars. Right here is my power button. This plus and minus is for everything and the needle up and down. It's the same on the rear. I forgot to show you that. So on the front screen, here is all of the stuff. I'm going to show you real quick right here. If you hit this little button right here, there's no button, it's just hit the, where the power is. Oops, I keep hitting it. And you can change your internet and everything. So you would hit settings. Then you can go to Wi-Fi and notifications and settings. And when you're in settings, you can change your sound, display, storage, battery, any apps on the machine that would go to the, um, the apps would be for updates and you can go to your uh, your automated quilting machine. I don't have that. You can do location. You can put your language. Back up and reset. You can do all sorts of things. Um, right here is where you'll find time and date. So you can set your time and date. Unfortunately, every time you turn the machine off, the time goes back to the, whatever time it was on. I have tried a bazillion ways to try to keep this time at the time that it was set. But unfortunately, it does not. And I know you can see the glare. That's one thing about showing screens against screens. But this is how you would do that. So if you hit it again, um, you press the back button right here. It takes you back to your beginning screen. Um, you have, if you want your needle to always be up, you would press needle up. I choose my needle to always be down. This is the home screen right here. And you can press play for timing you and pausing. I think that also helps when you have the um, automated thing on there. This first one is tools. It has, and I'm going to reset that, a timer for how long the machine has ran. It has the, for the project right here. And it also will show the, um, the full time amount of stitches on here. And it also has a bobbin alarm. So if you turned your bobbin alarm on, sorry, you can choose, oh my goodness. I guess I don't have my bobbin alarm set. Anyway, you can change your bobbin alarm from that. It has a calculator. So if you need to calculate for a quilt, if you're quilting for money, 
it has the King Quilter screen, and it has diagnostics. Um, I don't use any of these, but you can use them. So it tells you to remove bobbin case, clear all objects in the needle areas, press start, and it will stabilize the machine and all sorts of stuff. Then we have lighting under the light. So you can make it super dim and off or super bright. So And it has two lights. So there's one is off and one is still on. You can turn them both off so there's no lighting. That's if you have a really bright room. And then it has a UV light, as you can see. So if you're using glow-in-the-dark thread or some kind of metallic thread or clear thread even, I think, works really well under the UV light, which I don't really use. But anyway, we're going to turn the lights back on. And you can, like I said, you can make them brighter or dimmer. So there's that. Then you have more tools. So here's the bobbin alarm right here. <laughs> so this is the alarm on telling you when to stop if you only want to quilt for an hour. This is an alarm for that. And then it also has the bobbin alarm. And I'm not going to turn it on. So you have to make sure you turn the bobbin alarm. Tell it how much is in the bobbin or you can use its preset settings. Um, I have no idea how that works or how it tests that. But I just know that it has it. I do not use it. Then we have the last one, which is information. It tells you what the machine hardware and display and so on and so forth is. And my lifetime stitch count, which is 7,510,614. It has volume on the screen. It has a home button, which takes you back. Um, I don't know what these are because I don't have any other apps on here. Just this. Um, it shows you how much it's charged. It's a tablet, but again, if you turn the machine off, the tablet goes off with it. I do not keep my machine on 24-7. I do turn it off. So there is that. Again, all this controls it. So let me show you um, oiling. Okay, so for oiling, the manual says how to do it, but it doesn't visually show you. So we're going to come down here to the bobbin area. And I'm hoping that it's zoomed good enough. And I'm going to take the oil that came with it, with the long stick, and I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed. So it tells you to oil the lip. And I'm going to have to pause and re... Oh, maybe not. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> We're trying here. Trying. All right, I'm going to have oil all over my fingers, probably. So see that lip right there? This front lip. It says to put oil on this front lip. So here we go. I'm going to put one drop of oil. Now you can see the oil going on there. That is all that the machine needs. Also, when you are down here, you need to grab your brush. Um, you can either use the one it came with or you can get another really thin brush. And you take your brush and you clean out any dust. Can you see that dust and lint coming out? Um, so make sure you do that after every bobbin change or every other bobbin change in my case. Um, I didn't do it on my last time. So you just clean out. I'm moving the machine as I go. Let's switch hands so I can stop it from moving. And I just clean out the bobbin area. First oil. I mean oil after you clean the bobbin area, but I forgot to show you this. So, so you can see that dust coming out. Make sure that it's nice and free and clear of all dust. Secondarily, to dusting it out, and the first place I put oil, all right, that's clean. I'm going to come up here to the top, and I am also going to put more oil in the top part of the bobbin hole. So I just take my oiler and stick it down in that hole and put one drop. Just one. I put one drop in that hole. And my machine is in the garage where the washer goes, so there's it kind of rolls on its own. So, can you see that drop of oil? I accidentally got it on the thing, but I always try as best as I can to get it in the center hole. So, once it is in the hole, this is how I do this. And let me try to see if I can't grab somebody to help me with this next part. 
Okay, so that's not going to happen. I just do this myself. Um, I take and put the machine in manual mode. This is manual, this is precision, this is idle, and this is base. In manual mode, you actually, when you move the machine, the machine just goes and goes. You don't even have to move it. In precision mode, the needle will stop, typically in the down position, as you go forward, back, side to side. Every time you stop, the needle will stop. In idle mode, the machine will run at whatever percentage you put it at. So say I have it in idle mode. I have mine at 3%, so the needle will barely move because if you put it any higher, honestly, it creates a big nest at the bottom under the machine. So I just keep mine at 3%, but you can change that with the up. You can also change your stitch length right here. But in manual mode, you don't need to move the machine. The ma I mean, you do need to move the machine, but the machine does not stop when you stop. In manual mode, it just keeps going. So I'm going to stick this right here, or at least attempt to. And I'm going to show you manual mode and how I run the oil through here. So I have it in manual mode. I'm going to have to just show you. I press the start button. And it'll go up and down with no bobbing. There's no bobbing in here. Okay. Precision mode. We'll turn it on. So when I move the machine, I'm going to press start. The machine moves. If you stop moving, the needle stops moving. The machine moves. So I'm going to press stop on that. And when I press stop, the needle stopped in the down position. Idle mode is this. When you press power, it goes up and down. When I move it, it speeds up. Okay? So just remember, that's how fast it goes. If you change it, you're going to create a knot underneath on your backing of your quilt. So just remember. So it stops in the needle down position because I changed it to needle down. We're going to put it back in manual mode, though. I'm going to have it at 65%. That's pretty darn fast. And I'm just going to press start, and I'm going to let it run because that oil is in there. So while it's running with the oil, I take a rag. I keep a bunch of rags. They're just sheets. And I slide it under to pick up the excess oil like this. And I just kind of just go back and forth. Usually I have two hands for this. Please use two hands and be safe. If you get your fingers stuck under there, you're screwed. <laughs> So, in manual mode, I just let it run for a minute to clean off any excess oil. And I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to press stop for a second. Stopped with the needle down. I'm going to put the needle up. And I'm going to go in and clean any excess oil that splattered. As well as, I'm going to go under here and show you. I take my fingernail. And I just go onto that lip, and I clean any, like right here on the front half, excess oil and excess anything inside that bobbin area. And these are polyester sheets, so it really cleans it nice and good, and it gets everything out. Any yuck. So I just clean it out. And then after I do this, and let the machine run for at least, I don't know, I run it for about five minutes, usually. I'm just showing you for the video's sake. After I clean that and let the oil run through, I will actually put another drop of oil on that lip again and run it again, but only on the lip, not in the top half. So I will again just stick it on. Let's come back under again on this front lip right here. And I can't see as I video this little front lip. I just put a drop. So you can see that oil going on there. Just one drop of oil. And then again, I will turn the machine back on and let it run. So while that's running for a second, I'll be right back and show you the next. My next step is going to be basting my quilt after I uh, load um, thread it. But I'm going to show you in a second 
that goes on base, and the up button puts the number down, and the down button makes the number higher. I always baste my quilts with a half inch stitch. So I'll show you that in two seconds. I'm waiting for bobbins to be done. So I'm going to do this while on the quilt because I can only do these things one handed. So here is the bobbin casing. This is the bobbin casing. Inside you will find a spring. And let's see if I can't get it to focus. So there's a spring, I mean spring, spring inside there. There we go. Okay, and it is bent up. Can you see that? It needs to be bent up like that. Okay, so now we're going to lay this here and refocus. We're going to take the bobbin and you're going to find the way with the thread coming from the top. Bobbin casing facing opening this way. You're going to stick your bobbin in there, like so, and you're going to find that first lip. So there's that first lip that catches it. You're going to come through that hole. And this is going to be very hard to do one handed. Hold on two seconds. All right, we're going to do two hands on the washing machine. So Again, bobbin casing in your hand this way, facing up, bobbin coming out the top, okay, or to the right. Put it in, run it through to that first lip, come up under that and into right there. See that? So it goes into that hole. To test the tension, you're going to put it into your hand. And if you can lift up, see, and it pulls like that, that means your tension is good. So again, once it's in your hand, if it lifts up, it's good. If it lifts out of your hand, so let's say it was too tight and it lifts out of your hand, you're going to adjust it with this screw right here that I'm pointing at. So use the specific tool that is designed. If it's too tight, you're going to loosen it to the left. If it's too loose, you're going to tighten it to the right. Okay. So again, mine comes up and you can see that the bobbin is starting to come out because that inside of that bobbin um, casing is that spring and that spring keeps it sticking out and that is actually really good. So that is some good tension. Now I'm going to take this back over and we're going to show you how to install. With a long thread, you can see that my thread is super long just from testing it. I'm going to take and place this inside here just like so. And I'm just going to stick it in. And you can see that it's coming out the one side and then I'm going to push and it snaps. That means it is in. And if your tail is too long, which mine is, I just take a pair of scissors and I leave it kind of long, like you can see now. And I just snip it. If my snips would work, they don't work left-handed, they work right-handed. <laughs> Look at that, snipped right off. <laughs> so it just goes down and snaps in right there. So now let's thread the machine. Okay, so there are two holders for thread up here. You can put it on whatever one you want. I'm just going to stick mine on this back side like that. And I'm going to find the end of the string, my thread, and I'm going to come up here to the top. And Oops, I don't want it in that one. I'm going to slide it into its position which is that first one. So it comes off the top like that. And then it comes around to the front of the machine like so. And now, let's see if I can't do this one-handed. Okay, I had to have someone grab the camera. So now that you have it coming from the top, from your perspective, you know, hook, we're going to come in right here to this top piece. We're going to snap it through there. Okay, 
Then we're going to take the end of the thread and we're going to go through the top hole. And then we're going to hold it with the left hand, back with the right hand through the second hole. Same procedure. Grab with your left hand, take the rest of the thread, roll it through the third hole like that. Then you're going to take your thread and come down to this next notch right here and you're going to snap it into there like this. From there you're going to go in between these two discs and snap it in. So again in between the two discs snap it in. Bring it around like so. Don't let it get tangled. And you're going to come to this knob right here. So come back through that knob to the front of it to where it's pulling like so. Under this long bar up to this right here which has a hole. Come through that hole towards the front from the rear to the front. Pull through that hole. And then you're going to take the end of your thread and put it through this hole right here which is a guide. And now you're going to come to the front and there is a hole right here on the front. And you're going to push the thread through that hole. Okay, and then use your finger to bring it to where it comes back to the front again. So it goes through that hole. And then thread your needle. If I can do this I usually can just slide it right through. So we're going to thread the needle just like so. From front to back. Like that. So again, from just descriptive wise, it comes through this top piece around the first hole, wrap around the second hole, through the third hole, in through this little lip right here. And then you go to the back side coming around the back putting the thread in between these two discs, up into this spring right here, back down under this big bar, up through this hole, down through this hole, once you're through this hole, down through your needle guide, and in through the needle. Point the needle guide out again. It's hard to see in here. Okay, your hands were in the way last time. Okay, and there you have it. It is threaded. So the next part will be basting the quilt. Okay, now that I am on the front of the machine, I'm going to stick my needle down right here where I want to start basting. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, normally you have a, quite a bit of space between your leader cloth and your quilt top and between your quilt back and such. I'm like right at the edge because I had a um, ran out of fabric for this project and I didn't want to add any more. So unfortunately I'm stitching right at the edge. But I am going to show you how this just bastes and that's pretty much the next step. So we're going to take and I'm going to drop my needle. This would be if you're just doing it any other way. Now that I have my bobbin and everything in here I'm going to drop my needle right here in the corner, quarter inch away. So needle down, needle up. I'm going to move it a little bit away so that I can pull everything underneath. So let me bring this so that you can see. Now my top thread goes under and my bobbin thread comes from the bottom, if you can see that. Unfortunately, it's hard to tell because I'm using black thread, but... Now I'm going to stick it back over that hole, and normally, I, I don't know if I can hold this and do this at the same time, I probably can't. Normally I hold the thread, and I tie this off right here, let's see if I can't just pull enough to do this with one hand, and I'm going to tie it off, Three, four. I do about five, and then I leave the needle down. Okay, so I shouldn't have this really, really long. If you're trying to save thread, don't make it that long, but I was just doing it one-handed. And now I'm going to change my machine to baste, and I don't want it high. 
See, I don't want four stitches per inch. I want half a, half inch stitches for my basting. So now I'm just going to place this down here and hope that it stays. I'm going to press power. And now it should be stitching every half inch. And I'm just going to carefully do it. And as I go, I'm going to push a little bit down like so. I'm also, I have to be careful because of my needles, but um, this can be done one-handed after the basting part is over. So again, anytime I stop, I'm going to put that needle down. I'm going to move you guys just about right here. I'm having a hard time with the camera myself, but... We will make this work. So again, I press start. Oops. And I'm going to run across this whole top edge a quarter inch away from the top of the quilt. Again, I'm going to stop with my needle down. And I'll come over. start again and I have a pin right here so I'm going to pull that because that's my center pin so I'm going to drop my needle down real quick I'm going to pop this center pin out I'm just going to put it aside for now and then I'm going to press start and resume my stitching and this is pretty much like basing with any other long arm machine just baste across the top and put my needle down adjust you to where my camera won't go any further let's see right there would be good coming right here to the end let's hope that it stays I literally when I put the backing together I only had like not even an inch of space to work with so this is really cutting it close I do not suggest that ever <laughs> but I have no other choice and I'm okay with that so I'm going to come right here to the end put my needle down at the end and then I'm going to baste down this and back up again because I have this really really set far back so I'm going to pull now that it's basted across the top, I'm going to loosen it. I'm just going to turn my knobs. And the machine with the needle down will move. Just be very careful. And now I'm going to baste down this front section. And let's see if I can't show you that from here without knocking anything over. So now, I'm going to come as far down as the machine can go, and then on the side, I just go all the way back to the top again, and then I tie off. So I will tie off, come out, stick it down pull it out and trim it and then come back to the other side and I am going to pause just so I can base down. I'm going to start it back up here again and base down this side and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I have it basted, right here is your tension knob. Now, I'm going to explain this because my tension is really nice right now and I'm just loading a quilt, so I'm going to explain how this tension works. If you are quilting, and you're going around like so, and you have eyelashes on the top. That means your bobbin tension, and or you're going too fast, or your bobbin tension is needs to be tightened, to pulled back down. If you are going really fast and you're looking underneath and you have eyelashes underneath, and when I say eyelashes, I mean really, really loose strings um, that look like eyelashes, that means your top thread needs to go back down towards the bottom. 
So that means your top would be too tight. So if you turn this knob away from you clockwise, that is pulling your bobbin back to your top. If you have to adjust because it's too much bobbin seen, so say you use white on the bottom and black on the top, and you're seeing white on the top, but it's beautiful on the bottom, that means you need to turn this knob counterclockwise to bring your top thread and your bobbin thread back to even, evenly between the layers of your top batting and backing. Okay, so again, when it's wound, blah, 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 comes through your bobbin. I showed you on the bobbin casing, the little screw. Just remember, if you see too much bobbin thread on the top, the best way to test tension is to go really fast up and down and make loops. So you, in the loops you can see eyelashes, and the up and down you can see pokies that you're not supposed to see. When you see those things, you either have too, if you're seeing too much bobbin thread on the top, you adjust counterclockwise for the top thread down to the bottom. If you're seeing too much top thread on the bottom, you need to pull the top thread back to the top clockwise. Okay? So that's how that works. When I get a chance, I will try my best to get a video where I'm not using a real quilt and load some practice quilt stuff because I have tons of stuff for practice quilts. I'll load a practice quilt when I get a chance, like no promises. Um, I will show you bad tension versus good tension and purposely mess up my machine to show you. So for now, um, give me a second. Lastly, this right here, this knob adjusts, you loosen it. You can adjust your handlebars wherever you want them. So if you're doing really mini stitches, you want it really close to you. If you're just stitching regular, you want it far away. I use it far away up like this. And then you would just re-tighten it like so to where it stays where you want it. I use mine like about right here. I'll have to readjust it later just to get it right. But you can adjust both of them with the knobs. Needle. I turned the machine off, but here is how the needle goes in. So there is a tool that comes with the machine to undo that screw right there. See, has a little thing. So you would use the tool, undo that screw to put the needle in and out. Make sure that the needle is lifted to the top. Um, this machine uses Groats and Becker needles. Okay, and I'm going to show you how this works. So you can get them by the hundred pack. I typically use 16. 116 in this machine. Let me see if I can't get that to focus. So I use 116. The machine's manual tells you which size you need. This is the size. So I'm going to show you. When you put your needle in the machine, let's get one out so I can show you. The top is completely round. 100% round. Okay. Some needles have a flat. This one has a round top. Some of them have a flat top, so it just depends. All right. Let's see if I can't get a close-up of this. I need it to focus. I have to pull it away to focus. Okay. See that lip indentation on the back side right here? There is a lip. I'm going to try to do this. I'm trying here with one hand and a video. Okay. See that lip? That lip goes in the back. Okay. So that the front has a rounded point. That goes to the front of the machine when you're putting it in the hole. And then you would just hold that needle in the hole. So again, this lip thing, the indentation, I'm hoping you can see that really good. That indentation goes towards the rear of the machine. So when you insert that needle, it goes up into the machine like this. Flat, rounded side on the front, indentation towards the back. That is how the needle goes into the machine. So, let's see if I can't... There we go. See that indentation? That goes towards the rear. And the round part goes towards the front. That is how that works. Okay.
thinking about getting this King Quilter <laughs> 2 Elite Special Edition. It is very easy to use. I'm sorry my video is not that great, as well as I keep getting notifications while I'm making this video. Go figure. Um, just remember, temperature controlled space. So if you have to have it in a garage, make sure your garage does not get more than 90 degrees because the machine will not work. Um, it's not that the machine won't work. The machine works itself, but the screen stops working and so on. It's just a disaster. So keep it under 85. Um, and nothing lower. I mean, it does work in the cold, but I would say between 65 and 85 degrees is probably the best temperature for this machine. So if you're in the house, it's temperature controlled and, you know, it makes it easier. Um, just remember, this is a very simple, easy machine to load, use, everything. I will put a link to the video below that goes to how to load this frame. And um, enjoy your new machine. And if you're thinking about getting this, I personally love this machine. Um, it runs the same as the Handy Quilter. Everything that I've played with with the Handy Quilter machines, this is the exact same thing. Um, it is uh, from a Tin Lizzy, I think is the company that took, um, King Quilter took over Tin Lizzy, so it's Tin Lizzy brand most likely. Um, I don't know the whole history and background of it, but this is it. So, and it's the same parts, everything used by Handy Quilter, um, bobbin casing, the same feet for the machine is all from Handy Quilter. So, it's pretty much the same. So, if you're thinking about this machine, go test out a Handy Quilter, since, unless you're in California, you can go test this out. Um, other than that, Enjoy your new machine, and I hope this video kind of helped. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> so thank you for watching, and if you're new to quilting and this is your thing, um, I will little by little have more quilting on the long arm videos, as well as uh, most of my videos are piecing quilt tops. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe, and I post every Sunday with a live stream, and every other video is just random. So thanks for watching. Bye.